It is always a pleasure for me to talk about Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhiji touched the lives of millions across the world. Our family was one of them. My father was a commissioned officer, a captain in the British Indian Army during the First World War. The year 1919 was the year of the ghastly Jallianwala Bagh massacre. On the Sikh New Year's Day, Vaishakhi, a large crowd had gathered at Nulla to listen to nationalist speakers. The British General Dyer had stationed his platoon at the only exit from the Nulla and ordered his troops to shoot to kill. Each bullet fire had felled a man, woman, or a child. This outraged the entire nation. Following Mahatma Gandhi's call for non-violent, non-cooperation with the British rulers, my father resigned his King's Commission and vowed never to take a job with the British. He became an educator and inspired generations of students. For me, participation in the Quit India movement initiated by Mahatma Gandhi is still green in my memory. Those were heady days, 1945 and 1946. I had the rare opportunity then of meeting Mahatma Gandhi along with other student leaders. We pledged to him that no matter what, we would not resort to violence against person or property. In the months that followed, we planned a huge protest. As student leaders, we were at the head of a mile-long procession of protesters. Barely a few feet separated us from the taunting armed constabulary with drawn bayonets. We confronted them for our four year, our, for our right to protest. We stood our ground, remembering our pledge to Mahatma Gandhi. We prevailed then, as later the entire nation prevailed when we got freedom from the British. Who was Gandhiji and what is his legacy? Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi was born on October 2nd, 1869 and was felled by an assassin's bullet on January 30th, 1948. He died instantly with the words air on, on his lips. His life was remarkable. Even during his lifetime, he was revered the world over as Mahatma, the great soul. Upon his death, Albert Einstein commented, generations to come will scarcely believe that a such a one as this walked the earth in flesh and blood. What made Gandhi such a unique person? For me, his absolute integrity and total secular outlook stand out, along with his utter dedication to the concept of Satyagraha, non-violent resistance. Mahatma Gandhi was truly universal, both in his own development and in his approach to life. Significant influences in the personal development of Gandhiji were his study of Edwin Arnold's English verse translation of Bhagavad Gita and the reading 
of the Sermon on the Mount. Apart from religious scriptures, three important influences on Gandhi in his developmental years were from British, American and Russian authors. The utopian communism of Ruskin and unto this last, the mystical anarchism of Thoreau in his essay, Civil Disobedience, and the Christian pacifism of Leo Tolstoy expressed in The Kingdom of God is Within You. All three shaped the intellectual evolution of Gandhi's concepts of truth and nonviolence based on his bedrock faith in the Bhagavad Gita. It was South Africa that made Gandhiji what he became. It all started with the purchase of a first class ticket by the recently arrived non-white barrister Gandhi and being thrown out of the train for this transgression at the Peter Marshberg station. After consulting established members of the Indian community, he organized the first of demonstrations where people proclaimed their willingness to die in the fight against suppression. Thus, Gandhiji formulated his non-violent protest, Satyagraha. He was successful in getting a certain degree of civil treatment to the non-white people of South Africa. As Nelson Mandela has stated, you sent us Barrister Gandhi and we returned you the Mahatma. Non-violent resistance against apartheid in South Africa was later led by the leaders of the African National Congress. As Mandela said, we in South Africa brought about our new democracy relatively peacefully on the foundation of non-violent resistance. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission, headed by Reverend Desmond Tutu, formed in the Gandhian tradition, was instrumental in this transition. Gandhiji returned to India after about 20 years in South Africa, and we all know about his contribution to Indian independence, to mutual reverence among all religions, and for the removal of the disgraceful social inequities in the Hindu folk. While at MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the early 60s, I had the opportunity of discussions with Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. and joining in one of his freedom marches. Those of us who were in the United States in the 1950s and 60s did recognize that Reverend King was the inheritor of the mantle of the Mahatma. In the 60s, I also had the opportunity of meeting Linus Pauling, the two-time Nobel laureate. Our scientific discussions usually ended with our comparing notes on Mahatma Gandhi. Dr. Pauling attributed his own tireless pursuit of ending nuclear testing to his admiration for Mahatma Gandhi and his philosophy of nonviolence. In Canada, the legacy of Mahatma Gandhi is in the setting up by the Canadian government of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission headed by the jurist and senator Murray Sinclair, later a winner of the Peace Award of the Mahatma Gandhi Centre of Canada. Indigenous Canadians 
or making progress using non-violent means in getting equality of status and opportunity along with the rest of Canadians. Other than political activism, Mahatma Gandhi was an exponent of a way of life whom many may describe as anti-modern. He was really postmodern and could be considered the original green proponent. He left a zero carbon imprint and would have been a supporter of the present green movement. His way of living is a testament to this. What would Gandhiji be interested in had he been with us now? He understood the inexorable march of science and technology and would be greatly interested in an equitable distribution of their benefits. He would have worked for energy self-sufficiency of individuals and small communities. He would be aghast at the control of thought in our societies through print, visual and electronic media. Gandhiji would enjoin us to resist through peaceful means the wholesale invasion of our right to truth in information. His legacy would be to fight for the right of all individuals to truth in information, to equality of opportunity and to correct the flagrant violation of the moral code. Our homage to the Mahatma would be our commitment to do our part in furtherance of his ideals. Thank you.